as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a, as a servant of God, has our service to him, the church and our neighbors, been hindered for fear of catching COVID-19? go ahead and begin, right? Okay, we will then. Welcome. Good to see you guys. Let's, uh, let's begin tonight with a, a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, again, we, we thank you for these wonderful times that we get to come together and worship you even through the things that we, we learn, we, the things that we learn about you, the things that we learn about ourselves. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the the world that you have created for us to live in. Um, Lord, you have lavished your your grace and your blessings upon it. Uh, But Lord, because we are uh, born in a depraved state, because we we like to walk in darkness, because we we do evil deeds, uh, Lord, the world oftentimes, most times, goes in a direction that is is contrary to um, what would please you. So Lord, as we look in into these contemporary issues that are in our world uh, today, I pray that you would um, teach us and, and, and guide us into a, a, a biblical response so that we can be a light to those around us. Thank you for that that opportunity and privilege. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, tonight, we're going to begin this contemporary issues class by addressing perhaps the most contemporary issue, and that is COVID-19. Um, as we, we talked last week, we, we read a passage from Ecclesiastes that basically told us that there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, what has happened in the past will happen again. What's happening right now will ha- happen again. It may be called something different, um, but the, the issues that we're facing in the world right now, they, they've happened before, and the Bible does address them. While it doesn't address COVID-19 specifically, it does address how we might best respond to what's going in and our going on in our world right now. Um, uh, my goal for tonight is not to uh, argue my opinion about COVID-19, and yes, I do have some. <laughs> All right, but my goal tonight really ha- has four parts. Uh, in fact, most of our most of the contemporary issues that we're going to look at through this series will have pretty much the exact same outline. It's a four-part outline. And and not all of them will have this four-part outline, but I I would guess that 90% of them, okay, will. Um, And here is the four-part outline. This is what we're gonna do with with each of these topics that we look at, including COVID-19 tonight. We're gonna look at the world's view of it, the way the world is responding to it, or put briefly, the world's response. So the world's view, the world's response, the Bible's view, and the biblical response. So those four things will pretty much be covered in in every one of the topics we look at from here on out. The world's view, the world's response, the Bible's view, the biblical response. And and a biblical response to COVID-19 is, is really important. Um, for not only will a, a biblical response honor God, and that is our, our first priority, but it can, it can shine a, a beacon of light to those around us, to those that are some very, very fearful right now of what's going on in our world. Um, godly lives do matter in this, in this COVID-19 issue. We need, to, we need to be good representatives of God. It's critical, really, that we are 
brave, fearless even, through this, uh, this very prevalent issue. And so here, here's a question that I want to begin with, and I, I'm going to end with it too. But just a question, a question to get us thinking, and this is, this is kind of a, a personal application question. Don't answer it lo out loud, answer it to yourself. But it, here's a question I want to begin with, we'll end with it, and here it is. As a believer in Jesus Christ, as a, as a servant of God, has our service to him, the church, and our neighbors been hindered for fear of catching COVID-19? I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. As believers in Jesus Christ, as a servant of God, has our service to him, the church, and our neighbors been hindered for fear, in fact, I'll, I'll word it a little different this time to make it a little more specific, for fear of catching COVID-19. Um, fear is gonna be the key to our, our topic tonight. COVID-19 is actually, and I, I know you know this information already, okay? But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just state some, some documented statistics of, about COVID-19. It is actually one of uh, one strain of, of many common strains of coronaviruses. Uh, so know that when we when we look or see stats concerning coronavirus, um, that stat may or may not mean COVID-19. But COVID-19, it is it's a real virus. It is it's a brand new strain of virus. According to the CDC, it is slightly more contagious than other coronaviruses and influenza. Um, and according to the CC, CDC, it does appear to be a, a bit more deadly than those, especially to those 70 or older who have underlying health conditions. Uh, the CDC also says that only about 6% of the people who have died actually died from COVID-19, all right? And we're talking about the, the numbers that they post on, on a lot of the, the news websites. But, but I wanna begin tonight by looking at the world's view of COVID-19. And the world's view of COVID-19 is, it is extremely dangerous. That's how the world is seeing it. According to the, the coronavirus counter, on the Fox News website, uh, worldwide, over 31 million people have been infected by this virus. About one million people, according to the same counter, have died worldwide from this virus. Uh, in the US alone, this Fox News counter says that almost seven million people have been infected, that's in this country, and about just over 200,000 have died. But with that, I, I do need to give you a second world view that is out there because there is, I, I, I think, right close to a 50-50 split on how people are viewing this. So there is another world view out there. There are some that believe that this is not as dangerous as it is portrayed. Uh, for there are 31 million people that get the flu each year in the U.S. alone, okay? That's equivalent to the worldwide count of COVID-19. And 6% of 200,000 COVID-19 deaths in this country isn't that much different than the influenza death rate. But again, my, my purpose here tonight is not to determine who's right or who's wrong. Those are two views that are, that are prevalent in the world today. But I think most would see COVID-19 as, as dangerous, even extremely dangerous, because it is purported to be more contagious and more deadly than other strains. And, and I think part of the reason that there is so much fear about it is it is new. 
okay? That this is a, a new strain of virus. And, and um, there is that, that, that new element attached to it, that, that fear of the unknown. So the common world view is that it is extremely dangerous and, and therefore the world's response to COVID-19 is to fear and hate the spread. To fear and hate the spread. And one way this has been done is to, is to demonize it. Now, I, I really, I thought about my, my choice of words here and wondered if, if demonize is the right word or not, and it may or it may not be. But demonize means to portray something as evil and worthy of hating. And while I, I do not like to be sick, COVID-19 has been portrayed as something to, to fear and to hate. I think it has been demonized. And just to give you an, an idea, I guess, of, of why I say that, um, if that Fox News counter on their, on their home page there had a, a car accident counter, all right, let's say they had a car accident counter on their home page. Uh, worldwide and nationwide, we would see numbers that are 10 times greater than what we're seeing for COVID-19. And that's every single year, not just 2020. If car accidents were demonized and portrayed as, as feared and hated the way COVID-19 has been, people would stop driving. They would stop driving. But, but even though driving our car is way more dangerous, people don't fear it. So it, it's, that, it's that demonization, I think, of it that is causing that. In fact, statistically, statistically, you have a 30% greater chance of dying in a car accident on your way home tonight than you do from COVID-19. Count on me to always be that ray of sunshine. <laughs> COVID-19 has been portrayed as extremely dangerous. It has been feared, it's been hated. So realistically, I, I think it has been, it has been demonized. Uh, uh, and due to that portrayal, uh, the wor world, as you know, has, has shut down socially. Uh, the worldwide view is that, that human isolation is more important than, than human interaction. Uh, maintaining physical health is more important than, than social, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Um, China, Italy, India, and Russia are among the most restricted countries in the world right now. People are even being arrested for socializing in some of these, these countries. Uh, but there's another way some in the world have responded, and I'm sure you've heard this too, but uh, Sweden, uh, South Korea, Japan, they have had some of the least restrictive laws. Uh, they did not shut down their world, so to speak. And oddly enough, they have had not only f fewer cases than the above countries that I, I just listed, but they also got through the, the initial COVID season much faster th than we did. And not surprisingly, because COVID-19 has been demonized, um, it is these countries, Sweden, South Korea and Japan that are among the most criticized by the rest of, of the world for how they handled COVID-19. So the world's view of COVID-19 is that it's extremely dangerous. The world's response is to fear and hate the spread. And, and here, here's the thing about fear, and this is gonna kind of lead us now into the, the biblical view and then the biblical response. But just a couple things about fear before we get there. Um, three things, actually. Fear traps us. 
Uh, fear traps us. It, it stops us from doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, let's turn to a few passages. Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, it says, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. And that is a, a principle, not a promise. It's not a guarantee. It's, it's a principle to live by. But the point I want to make here is that we are told directly that the fear of man brings a snare. What is a snare? Okay, a trap. And, and, and what does it do? Hold you. It holds yeah. you. Yeah, it's, that's what it's supposed to do, right? It holds you, all right? It, it, it takes away our, our freedom. It, it stops whatever has been trapped from doing what it either wanted to do or was supposed to do. And because of fear, we, or anyone, really can go from, from free to, to being captive. And I gotta tell you, this actually made me think of the story of David and Goliath. The story of David and Goliath. Here were the, the Philistines, the enemy of the Israelites on one side of a valley, taunting the Israelites to fight their 10 foot tall champion, Goliath. And there on the other side of the valley was the Israelites cowering in their tents, refusing to leave their camp. I think they were self quarantining. But, but whoever, whoever trusts in the Lord sh shall be safe. That, that's what we're told here. Fear traps us. Fear, secondly, hinders God's use of us. Fear can hinder God's use of us. Was David the only one who could defeat Goliath? No, he, he wasn't. He wasn't. Any single one of those men in the Israelite army could have not only survived their encounter with Goliath, but could have actually beat him by the power of God. And any one of us can survive COVID-19 and even beat it by the power of God. Um, Psalm 18, you don't have to turn there. It says, for by you, I can run against the troop by my God, I can leap over a wall. That's, that's what God, God's power can enable us to do in, in any battle. But fear hinders God's use, God's use of us. And then thirdly, fear is a tool of Satan. Uh, fear is a tool of Satan. Um, he uses fear to, to trap us. And this one, I, I, this is one reason I, I do like the word demonize toward COVID-19, because it carries right in it the source of, of fear and hate. Uh, the devil himself, fear, fear is a tool of, of demons, the devil. I turn to, to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter two. Revelation chapter 2 and verses 10 and 11. Well, you know what? I'm going to, I'll go, all, let's go all the way back up to verse 8. Get a little bit of the context here. It says, And to the angel of the church at Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation, poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. 
do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So the point I want to make here with this passage is whether it be persecution, whether it be tribulation, whether it be your average, ordinary, everyday trials, whether it be COVID-19, um, fear is a tool of Satan. And he, he uses it to, to hinder us from what God wants us to to do. Um, he does it by trapping us, taking us captive, right, right sometimes in our, in our own minds. Romans chapter 8, let's look at a, a few verses there, and this will kind of introduce the biblical view of, of COVID-19. Uh, Romans chapter 8, And I just want to read to you a, a few verses from this chapter. Romans chapter 8 and beginning with verse 15. It says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Jump down to verse 18. The author here, Paul, he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Jump down to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. With those three verses in mind, here, here is the, the biblical view of COVID-19. God is in control. I, I, know, I know you know this. <laughs> I know this. But I think we, we need to be reminded of, of that often. God is in control. He, he's not worried about COVID-19 at all. Not at all. He's not worried about, at all about really what, what the world is even thinking about it or saying about it. And of course, while the Bible does not address COVID-19 directly, it has lots to say about issues and dangers in the world and, and fearing not. All right, uh, let's go to another passage, Lamentations chapter 3. Um, if you've been with us on Sundays, you should know where Jeremiah is. Jeremiah is by now. Well, Lamentations follows that. Lamentations chapter 3, and let's read verses 37 and 38. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 37 and 38. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? It is not from the mouth of the Most High that, excuse me, is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed. Now, a couple of, two, two questions I want to ask you about this passage. Number one, what does this passage say about the world's control of things? They, they have none, all right? They have none, none, no control whatsoever. What does this passage say about both the good and bad in the world? All right. 
God not only allows it, but they are completely under his control. Matthew chapter 8. Let's look at what appeared to be a bad thing. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verses 23 through 27. You've heard the story, I would bet. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27, it says, Now when he, Jesus, got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. But he, Jesus again, was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, in looking at this passage, what was the disciples' main concern? Yeah, they're safe. perishing. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Um, the wind and the waves, out of control. Dying, perishing. Dying, okay. Ultimately, ultimately, it was the fear uh, of death. The fear of physical death. What was the solution to that fear? Jesus, right, faith. And that, that's, the, that's the way Jesus put it. Faith in God. And apparently they're wondering, who can this even be? <laughs> but Jesus is that, is that person. He's God. How did Jesus demonstrate his control of the situation? Okay, he spoke and what happened? Okay, the storm went calm. What are some things that we learn and see about Jesus through this, this deadly story? Just raise your hand and, and, and I'll call on you, Jeff. What, what's something you see? Name one thing. His calmness. Okay, his calmness in the storm. Himself. See, I didn't even have that one on my list. Yeah. All right, yeah. He, just, he wasn't worried at all. He didn't jump up and go, oh my gosh, you're right. He just says, oh, you have little faith. In okay, yeah. excellent one. I, I, I didn't think of that one. His calmness in it. Another one. There is more than that. <laughs> Be brave. This is about not fearing, remember? <laughs> Be brave. <laughs> what else do you see here? What, what else do we learn about Jesus from this passage? All right, Judy. His power. Okay, his power. He has power over the danger. What did you say, Joe? He cared. Okay, he cared. They, they, they cried out in help and, and for help, and, and he cared about the situation. What else? Jeff? He reacted. I mean, he... Okay, he responded. He responded, you know? Th that was a prayer, <laughs> and he answered it. Becky? The wind and the sea obeyed him. Okay. Nature obeyed him. Anything else? What was that? Okay. He, he demonstrated his leadership. We should probably follow. Bill? Well, his rebuke, when he said to him, you are timid, you have a little faith. All right. He was, in a way, scolding. Okay. He, he was scolding like, them because they weren't trusting in him, God. Did I see another hand over here? Um, Amanda? Okay. He knew the end from the beginning. That actually tells us something else, too. Um, 
what did he know about the lives of the disciples? They weren't ending that day, yeah. right? <laughs> they weren't ending that day. Um, anything else? I, I had one more thing that hasn't been brought out yet. I think maybe I, the fact that eternity is more important than today. Okay, and I didn't have that one listed there on my list either, but that's a very good point. And that is, that's really the bottom line of everything here. Eternity is more important than today. The eternal things are more important than the temporal things. The spiritual things are more important than the physical things. Anything else? Becky? Yes, then why are you fearful? What was that? Fearful. Why are you fearful? Okay, th they were fearful. That's right. <laughs> he was sleep he was calm. Yeah, Where Jeff kind of brought that out. He, he 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 wasn't worried at all. Where aside from Jesus being in the boat asleep, where was he in a more general sense? In a different boat, wasn't he? With them. He he was with them. He was with them in, in that storm. And and as he Later on, as, as he's uh, getting ready to ascend into heaven, and he tells them to go make disciples, he tells them, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And that, that right there is a promise for you and I. All right? All right, so there's some things that we can learn about Jesus. And, and I'll, just, I'll just list a few of them out here. I'm not going to list everything you had there but very good answers. Um, God is in, in complete control of this COVID-19 storm. Um, he is with us. Hebrews 13.5 says he will never leave us. Uh, John 14.7 says he will dwell with us and in us. So God is with us. Secondly, God sustains our life. It's him that determines when it begins, when it ends, and how, how, how we're sustained in the midst. Uh, you don't have to turn there. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and here's the key. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. God sustains our life through anything. Uh, Hebrews 1.3, it ends by saying... Um, he is the express image of, of God's person and upholds all things by the word of his power. So God sustains our life. These, by the way, are all reasons to, to, to show us that, that God is in control. He's in control of this. Also, God values our life. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 Verses 29 through 31. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. And I'll just stop there a minute. Basically what he's saying is, in man's eyes, these are things of almost no value whatsoever, okay? But not a single one falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. Verse 30, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses, oh, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, it goes on to a little bit of a different uh, line of thought there. But he says, don't fear. You are of more value than, than many sparrows. In what ways does this describe 
um, the way God values us. All right. I'm looking for the obvious here. We're worth more than sparrows, right? We're worth more than sparrows. He loves us. Okay, he, he loves us. Ron? He knows us in depth. I mean, he knows the number of hairs on our okay. head. Okay, he's got an intimate knowledge of, of us. And, and really, um, one knows most about the things that one values the most. And he knows the hairs on our head. Husbands, do you value your wives? Yes. Do you know how many hairs she has on her head? I know my hair. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask that of wives, but some wives might know exactly how many hairs <laughs> on their husband's head. Zero. Zero. Psalm 116. Let's turn there. Psalm 116, verse 15. I, I, I love this verse. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see, God sees our life and he sees it from beginning to end. Um, and he sees it as precious. In fact, the wording here, and you might have a translation that, that brings it out a little bit more, but the verse actually communicates that our death, the end of our life, affects God's, God emotionally. It affects him emotionally. We are precious, precious to God. And therefore, something as, as truly insignificant as COVID-19, God's got this. He's got it. So he, he's with us. He sustains our life. He values our life. He cares about our life. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, you don't have to turn there, says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Every little thing we go through, he cares about those things. He protects our life. That's another one. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. God determines the number of our days. Job 14.5 says, Man's days are determined. The number of his months is with you. And he's speaking to God. You have appointed his limits so that he cannot pass. God determines the number of our days. And God rewards faith in him. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and he, that he is the rewarder of those who, who diligently seek him. Fear robs us. Fear robs us, and faith is rewarded. God is in control. That is the view that you and I have to have concerning COVID-19 and really every other topic we're going to look at from here on out. God is in control. Here is the biblical response now to COVID-19. And, and this is gonna really surprise you. Fear not. Fear not. Psalm 27, one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom or what shall I be afraid? I, 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 don't, I don't mind telling you that there are missionaries right now in third world countries that find the world's view and response to COVID-19 humorous. They, they find it humorous. Uh, Brad Harris is a missionary that I know that is in Kenya, Africa. He's been there for many years now, okay? And he has continued to minister, minister there through, through diseases and dangers that are 10 times more deadly than COVID-19. Cholera, malaria, hepatitis. If someone gets cholera, if it isn't treated, it, it's, it will kill you, period. There's no, none of the 6% stuff, okay? Nor is it something that happens only once every 100 years, like a pandemic. This is, these are things that are out there daily, year after year. Missionaries in some third world countries find the COVID-19 shutdown funny. Even if COVID-19 was the worst and most deadly pandemic the world has ever known, God's children should fear not. And, and here, here's, I want you to, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, okay? It's not about being careless or callous, all right? We have to be wise about sickness, wise with our lives. We know our own bodies, okay? Yes, we should avoid being careless and, and callous. Uh, yes, we are to be good stewards of our bodies, take care of them. They, they are God's temple. Yes, we are to watch out for the interests of others as we do our own. Yes, we are to obey even the laws of the land until they discriminate against God, his ways, and his people. Yes, we are, are to honor God with our, our physical life. But don't worry about your life. Don't worry about it. Matthew 6, 27 says, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And what's the answer to that rhetorical question? No one can. No one can. No one can add a single hour to one's life by worrying. In fact, it, it could shorten our life. It will certainly, certainly diminish the quality of it. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. But a good word makes him glad. Don't worry about your life. Be sober-minded. Let's turn to this passage, 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter five and verses eight and nine. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that these same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Ain't that the truth? That, that word devour actually means to, to swallow, and it's, it's reminiscent again of, of that, that captivity that, that fear creates. But right in this verse, we find a few other ways that we can respond to COVID-19. What are they? What are some ways that we can respond to, to th things that we might normally fear? Okay, sound mind is the one I was focusing on there. And, and alert, you said, being watchful. Watchful, in other words, watch out for those things 
that might happen in this world that, quite frankly, our adversary is probably using to hinder God's use of you. Be, be watchful of those things. Uh, this passage specifically is talking about suffering from persecution, but any kind of suffering can do that. Be watchful of the devil's traps. What else? What else can we, do we learn here in, in response to COVID-19 or our adversary? Mm-hmm. Resist him. Resist him. In fact, James 4, 7 says the best way to do that is by submitting to God, doing what he wants. Steadfast in the faith is another thing listed there. Keep doing what you've been called to do. Don't let the fear stop you. In uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil. He uses fear. He can even use something that's very real like COVID-19 as a scheme. Now there is no doubt in my mind that while COVID-19 is a very real virus, it has been demonized. Many in the church have believed that, that this really is extremely da- dangerous and perhaps on a physical level It is, but God's in control. And when we're walking with him, we're we're safe, we're safe. And because of the portrayed fear and hate, the world says that anyone who does not fear and hate it as much as I do, well, they must not just care about the people. They must not care about the people of the world. It is a real disease. It's a danger, okay? But the devil is using it. He uses lots of things. He's using it to trap people. And and just, you know, I I don't know, there may be some here, maybe some listening that that would disagree that uh, it's uh, uh, with some of the things we said here, but has it trapped people? Okay, it's taken people captive uh, in their mind, in their emotions, even in their home. It's taken people captive. And, and that is a, a tool of the devil. It's working. As a believer in Jesus Christ, as a servant of God, has our service to him, the church, or our neighbors been hindered for fear of catching COVID-19. Now I know that there are restrictions in place that that are uh, suppressing a lot of the ways that we can minister, but has our service to him been hindered for fear of of catching it? We we need to fear not. Don't worry about your life. Be sober-minded, submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Exhibit our faith. Do we trust God or not? Because our our words, our actions will reveal whether we do or not. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 16 says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. I urge you, brethren, You know the household of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to ministry, to the ministry of the saints. And he says that you also submit. He's wanting them to to follow suit, to, 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 to continue to minister even in the face of adversity. Since the beginning of COVID 19, Uh, My goal, really, has been to not change anything about my ministry. Yes, the way I've ministered has had to change, 
but my goal and, and my activity, or my goal has been that my, my activity would not. And, and I have to admit that at times, it has been motivated by a rebellious spirit um, that just didn't want to submit to what, in my opinion, were, were silly restrictions, my opinion, okay? But I also wanted to exhibit my, my faith in God through um, continuing. And whether I did good or bad, I, I really don't know. God will be the judge of that. But my goal was to, to fear not. Um, I, I desired to exhibit my faith in, in the fact that God is in control to anybody who, who might watch me. And then lastly, just in, in, in closing out our evening, uh, when we realize that God is in control of, of, of everything and we fear not, as, as, as a result, um, we will respond by, by ministering to one another. I, I thought about this, I was thinking about the end of, of this lesson a couple nights ago, and uh, I wrote down three questions. And I'm gonna ask them uh, from the standpoint of, of me, okay? It's basically, should I? And you can answer, but as you answer these questions, also apply it to yourself. Um, ask it as if you're asking yourself to, but I, I worded them as if I'm asking you your opinion about me, all right? Should I, and I want your advice here, okay? Should I put my spiritual well-being ahead of my physical well-being? Yes, okay? Uh, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So yes, I should put my spiritual well-being ahead of my physical well-being. Question number two, should I put your spiritual well-being ahead of my physical well-being. Jesus did. Jesus did. Third question. Should I put your spiritual well-being ahead of your physical well-being? Yeah, I, I should. The eternal is always more important than the temporal. And I, I, I just I was up one night asking these questions of myself so I could put them out to you and, and you can ask yourself those, those questions as well. Um, keep ministering to one another. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. That's what God has called us to, whether times are good or bad whether there is a pandemic or not. And, and I, 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 I just, I have to say this, because I have seen you become very creative at that. I, I, I know that many of you, because I've, I've interacted with you, I know that many of you are not fearful. So I'm, I'm kind of speaking to the choir here in many respects, but as we portray that fearlessness, it, 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 it's going to comfort those around us. So human interaction is more important than human isolation, contrary to the world's view. Maintaining spiritual health is more important than physical health, contrary to the world's view. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Because we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to, to his purpose. Well, let me read this one last verse to you, and we're done here. One last verse, and just listen to it. It's from 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. It says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. 
as he is. He's, he's everlasting. We are too. Because he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And there's kind of two sides to this. Number one, we have nothing to fear because we won't face torment. Our end's already been determined if we placed our faith in, well, even if we haven't placed our faith in Jesus Christ, God knows our end, okay? But you, you know what I'm saying here. We are victorious because of what God has done. We should have no fear about what comes after this life. But on the other side of that, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, when we fear in this life, it's difficult, if not impossible, for us to love others because we're trapped. We're trapped within ourselves. We're worried. The, the greatest evangelical movement, the greatest effort of ministry in the world is actually written about in the book of Revelation. And it takes place during the greatest tribulation the world will ever know with the world population being diminished by billions of people through disease and destruction. It is during that period of time that the greatest ministry that the world has ever known of people to one another is going to take place. I'd say if those ministers of God will continue through that, uh, we can through this. Well, let's, uh, I'll just open it up. If you have comments or questions, um, Gary. Question about the passage, uh, our death is precious. Might mean something different to me than it actually means what it means. If you love somebody, you desire to be with them. So to me, that's saying he's happy. He's not upset that we're there. He's happy because we come home. Yeah, I, I think it's got a little bit different flavor to it, um, and 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 I don't remember. There is a translation that words it a little bit differently. Did, did I see a hand over here? No, okay. Um, it, 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 it's not a sadness, okay? It's a value thing. It's a value thing. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a gladness either. It, it's more of our, our value to him. To, and, and I'm trying to remember. I, I, I went, had, did a study in, in that particular passage several years ago and, and it, it, it's along the lines of um, God almost, not sadness, but mourning with us, okay? It, 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 I'm, I'm not doing a very good job of describing it. It does say grieving, okay? So it, it's, there is a difference between sadness and mourning Mourning is more of an emotional feeling of the, the value that's there than, than just being sad. All right. A any, Becky? I was thinking more along dying to our, our sins. Uh, um, he rejoices when, oh, I forgot. Actually, I, I had it, but I, um, never mind. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> Sometimes words just come out of my mouth, and I, I, I don't know where they I came from. I don't know where they're going, and there I am. Ron? Uh, I just, you know, it's very interesting when you think about it, that how cunning Satan is, you know, throughout, you know, over the decades, as more and more pressure has come upon the church because of changes in society, we as a church have become more and more fearful to openly talk about the gospel in public. But even in spite of that, the church still exists. We're still here. And so Satan has found another way to put fear. And that's not in fear in believers. But now he's placed fear in non-believers to even interact yes. with one another. Yeah. So he's yeah. cut it off. So, 
even though we can be brave, he's still created a new challenge for us. For sure. And, and you know, one, one thing to remember here, while our, our topic has been fear and we've looked at our adversary and how he's using it, know that God's using this too. He, he's using it in, in really, really great ways. I mean, even, even through this, this pandemic, we've had new people come to church. We've had people that, that, that hadn't been to church, hadn't been going to church, that started coming because of this. So God is, is, God is in control, period. All right, did I see another hand, uh, Joe? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, the, the, the task hasn't changed. You know, the, the task hasn't changed. We need to love those people. And one way to love them is to demonstrate a spirit that isn't fearful, okay? But love those people, yeah. Right. Right. No, it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to best answer that other than the fear is hindering us from what we're supposed to be doing. And I think the thing to do is keep doing what we're doing and not stop. And I think that's kind of my point of looking at this contemporary issue tonight is it has stopped many. Um, keep, keep loving them. Be compassionate. Um, Trials happen. This, 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 this happens to be a, a big one for many people. Yeah. And, and like I said, God, God is using it. There have been people, I, 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 I'm not going to name names, but th there are some people here at River Valley Bible Church that had not been going to church in a very long time. They've been doing their own thing for a very long time. And as a result of COVID and a little bit of fear, they prayed, they sought God, they, they came back. So God's using it too. Yeah. All right, if that is all, I will close in prayer. We have about a minute over time. Father, thank you for tonight. Uh, thank you for your word to us, which over and over and over again shows us that you are in control and we have nothing to fear if we've placed our faith in you. Uh, Father, thank you for that. And I pray that we can take uh, those truths, those truths and demonstrate them, lovingly demonstrate them in our lives to those around them lovingly tell these things to people around us. Let them know God's in control. God's got this. Show them passages of scripture that can lead us, Lord, to passages of scripture that we can show them. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for uh, just the fact that we can be safe in you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.